we've discussed Robert Downey in the previous video. Who doesn't even know Iron Man in the first place? As you well know, Robert Downey is the one portraying it. We also discussed his outlandishness in our last video, and it seems like there is more of it. That's why we decided on part two. This video will discuss the controversies surrounding the Iron Man actor and why Robert Downey Jr. isn't a nice person. But before we get into it, do me a favor and smash the like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button for notifications whenever a new video is published. To recall a few details about Robert Downey Jr., he reached his peak himself as one of Hollywood's highest paid actors. His relevant films were the Iron Man series, which also plays a massive role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The majority of us believed that Robert Downey Jr. closely resembles the character of Iron Man he was portraying. But we were wrong. Because of the substance abuse of his past, John Favreau, the director of Iron Man, almost refused to make Downey play Iron Man. It wasn't easy at first though, with Favreau quarreling with Marvel, insisting that Downey deserves to be a part of the well-known series. Countless phone calls were made and John's resources were spent, but he didn't stop there. Downey played his role well, and Favreau didn't regret getting him, as Iron Man is now a multi-billion dollar franchise. Most of his controversies were associated with substance abuse. One incident cites that an intoxicated Downey wandered into a neighbor's house and passed out on a bed. Another was when Downey was spotted walking around the streets of Culver City barefoot while on his parole days. He was later removed from the TV program Ali McBeal, sent back to prison and ordered to rehabilitate. The Downey family has its name of the industry and substance abuse. The father, Robert Downey Sr., made his son influenced by his addiction, in which he allowed his son to try some hints of cannabis while he was six years old. It made the bonds between them grow stronger. Bond completion companies initially refused to insure Downey until Mel Gibson paid the insurance bond for his picture The Singing Detective in 2003. He went on to star in films including Kiss Kiss Bang Bang in 2005, Zodiac in 2007, and Tropic Thunder in 2008. For that, he was nominated an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. It was an ultimate success for Downey until Jon Favreau reached a hand for him and paved the way for Iron Man to be successful. But before we proceed to some of the controversies the actor is involved in, let's try to dive first into the early life of what we know as Iron Man, which wasn't discussed in the previous video. Robert Downey's Early Life and Career Downey was born in Manhattan, New York City, the younger of two children. Robert Downey Sr., his father, was an actor and filmmaker, and Elsie Ann, his mother, was an actress who appeared in Downey Sr.'s films. Downey had modest appearances in his father's films when he was younger. At the age of five, he had his acting debut in the absurdist comedy Pound in 1970, playing a sick dog, and at the age of seven, he starred in the surrealist Western Greasers Palace, 1972. Downey relocated to California with his father after his parents divorced in 1978, but he dropped out of Santa Monica High School in 1982 and returned to New York to pursue an acting career full-time. Downey began his career in theater with the role of Norman Lear's short-lived off-Broadway musical American Passion at the Joyce Theatre in 1983. He was hired as part of the new, younger ensemble for Saturday Night Live in 1985, but after a year of low ratings and criticism of the new cast's comedic abilities, he and the rest of the new crew were fired and replaced. According to the Rolling Stone magazine, the Downey fail sums up everything that makes SNL great, which crowned Downey the worst SNL cast member of all time. In the 1987 film version of Brett Easton Ellis' novel Less Than Zero, Downey portrayed Julian Wells, a drug-addicted affluent youth whose life quickly spirals out of his hands. Although Downey has said that the role was like the ghost of Christmas future for him, since his drug problem caused him to become an exaggeration of the character in real life, his performance was critically lauded. Janet Maslin of the New York Times described it as desperately affecting. He played Charlie Chaplin in Chaplin in 1992, a role for which he studied hard, learning to play the violin and tennis left-handed. 
He had a personal trainer who assisted him in imitating Chaplin's posture and mannerisms. The role garnered Downey an Academy Award nomination for the Best Actor at the Academy Awards 65th Ceremony, losing to Al Pacino in Scent of a Woman. In the years later, Downey was on the verge of controversies regarding drug-related issues. Downey has been arrested several times on drug charges, including cocaine, heroin, and marijuana. Downey's stepmother, Rosemary, informed author Alex Trezenlovsky in a People magazine article titled Bad to Worse on December 18, 2000, that Downey had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and that this was the reason he was having such a hard time keeping sober. What hasn't been tried is medication and intensive psychotherapy. Dr. Manije Nikaktar, a Los Angeles psychiatrist and co-author of Addiction or Self-Medication, The Truth, claimed in the same article that she got a letter from Downey in 1999 asking for guidance on his condition while he was at Corcoran too. She discovered that no one had done a complete psychiatric evaluation on him. I asked him flat out if he thought that he was bipolar and he said, oh yeah. It was his bipolar disorder that caused his extensive mood swings on some controversial incidents. Let's credit the issue when he called Channel 4's Krishnan Guru Murthy a syphilitic parasite for intruding on some personal concerns that Downey kept on his own. Bipolar disorder, formerly known as manic depression, is a mental health illness that involves emotional highs, mania or hypermania, and lows, depression. These mood swings can affect sleep, energy, activity, judgment, behavior, and the ability to think clearly. Guru Murthy said to Downey, the reason I'm asking you about your past is you've talked in other interviews about your relationship with your father and the role in all of that of the dark periods you went through, taking drugs and drinking and all of that. I just wondered whether you think you're free of all of that or whether that's something. The actor cut him off and asked, what are we doing? Are we promoting a movie? And then walked out. We're pretty much concerned about how Downey acted in that one, but I'm sure he does some measures to minimize that behavior. We all wanted the best for Iron Man, don't you? I'm one of those guys who is assuming the social etiquette is in play and that we're promoting a superhero movie. A lot of kids are going to see it. This is nothing to do with your creepy, dark agenda that I'm feeling. Like all of a sudden ashamed and obligated to accommodate your weirdo shit, he told Howard Stern in an interview. It seems that his bipolar disorder came a long way. But that doesn't define who Robert Downey is now. We always know that he is Iron Man, and he proved it in his real identity. His reaction was just caused by the verge of guilt he experienced during his childhood. But now we all know that he surpassed all of that and is now making a living peacefully. We cannot judge a person from his past, but we can praise a person for the achievements that he has possessed. But what do you think? Is the Iron Man we know the same as he portrays 